Hello and welcome to Star Inside News. Today we are going to share Princess Diana clashes with Queen Elizabeth inside their complex relationship. Andrew Morton, groundbreaking 1992 memoir about Princess Diana made him a key figure in one of the most talked about periods in royal history after writing Diana, her true story with his subject Diana as his secret source. The author was thrust into the center of the royal saga and is now a character played by Andrew Stelly on season 5 of Netflix, The Crown. Now he is revisiting those tumultuous years in a new book, The Queen, Her Life Out Now, which captures the legendary region of Queen Elizabeth who died on September 8 at age 96. She was very supportive of Diana, Martin tells people. Diana always felt that the queen was a kind of marital referee and that queen should really intervene over her husband's relationship with Mrs. Parker Bowles. But the queen policy was to hope for the best. By the end of her life, the queen had become a beloved grandmother figure. We all thought she was superhuman. He says she was in fact human. Here experted from his new book a look back at the turmoil that surrounded by the queen in the 90s probably the worst decade of a region martin says the dam burst on june 14 1992 with the publication of the biography diana her true story what was shocking was the book depiction of a royal world where the emotional temperature was chilly and the social landscape Forbidding when the book was first serialized on the Sunday Times under the front page headline Diana Driven to Five Suicide Bids by Uncaring Charles. The response was exclusive, explosive, explosive. Criticism of the book, which came from all sectors of society, was severe and unrelenting. Though the Queen had been painfully aware of the marital rift for some time she was unprepared for such a detailed publication exposition while the palace was searching for a suitable strategy outwardly it was business as usual diana stood beside the queen on the balcony at buckingham palace for the official birthday salute and joined the royal family at windsor castle for escort week behind the scenes the queen and her aides tried to manage the unhappy situation. Her private secretary, Robert Fellows, asked the princess paint blank if she had cooperated with the book. She looked him in the eye and told him a bald-faced lie. No. Days after the separation announcement, Diana made an appointment to see the queen at Buckingham Palace when she entered the queen's suit. She burst into floods of tears, Diana claiming that everyone was against her. The queen did not know what to do, recalled a lady in waiting afterward. She was, has always hated this kind of emotional confrontation and frankly has never had to deal with it before or since. During their hour-long conversation, which was punctuated by tears, the queen was able to reassure Diana that came what may she would ever be challenged regarding custody arrangement for her two boys. This was a profound relief for the princess, who had fretted about this issue long before the actual separation. For the next few years, the war of the Willis consumed the media and agitated the queen and the rest of the royal family. Everyone tiptoed around Diana, concerned that the unpredictable princess referred to as a loose cannon would further damage the already listing institution much against the better judgmental of her mother and sister. The queen tried to keep Diana within the fold, quietly hopeful that at some point Charles and his wife could affect a reconciliation. At this delicate period, the olive branch was ever present. For her part, Diana somewhat natively continued to see the queen as a family referee. With regard to her separation from Princess Charles, Prince Charles, she was frustrated that she had not intervened to end Prince Charles' relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. The Queen and the Queen Mother had shown their 
approval of this long running affair by refusing to invite Mrs. Parker Bowles to any court function. It was as far as Diana was concerned. Not enough. My mother in law has been totally supportive, but it's so difficult to de- get a decision out of her. She observed diplomatically. Essentially, she was playing a waiting game, prepared to sit on the sideline until her husband took the initiative and asked for a divorce. She felt that as he had asked her to marry him, he should be the one to initiate proceeding. It was a view she made clear to the queen in the hope that she would push her son in the direction of divorce. In November 1995, Diana appeared on BBC Panorama show where she spoke candidly about her love and her life. Wearing striking black eye makeup that gave her a haunted look, she thus discussed her eating disorder, her failed marriage, her depression, and her husband's adultery. She talked about her love, James Hewitt, her belief that Charles was not up to the top job of king, and her desire to be queen of people heart. She reserved her most devastating singer for her love rival Camilla Parker Bowles. When interviews, Ur Martin Bashir asked about Camilla's role in the marriage. She said sweetly, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. When it was broadcast, her television confessional was both shocking and, as far as the royal family was concerned, unforgivable. When the Queen finally watched a recording of the show, she was despairing. Her husband, apo- apoplectic, Something had to be done for the sake of not just the monarchy but also their grandchildren. The queen, having held out the olive branch for so long, was now determined to cut the marital guardian knot. On December 18, Diana received a handwritten note from the sovereign delivered by a uniform courier to Kenston Palace from Windsor Castle. It was Diana noted ruefully the first letter she had ever received from her mother-in-law in part the letter said i have consulted with the archbishop of canterbury and with the prime minister and of course with charles and we have decided that the best course for you is divorce even in the personal crisis the queen invited diana to stay with family at center gum for christmas diana declined telling friends that she would go up in BMW car and come out in a coffin. Instead, she spent Christmas on her own at Kingston Palace before flying off for a holiday in the Caribbean. The prince's decision to decline the sovereign invitation, normally viewed as command, marked the nadar of their relationship with the queen. It was an upfront too many. From now on, the queen was not always available to take her phone calls or ready to invite her to afternoon tea. Their dealings were necessarily more business-like than before, as the Queen was one of the interested parties in in divorce negotiation. Diana's future future title did, though, become a matter of dispute. It was reported that she had decided to be known as Diana, Princess of Wales, and had told friends that she had agreed to drop the Appellation, Her Royal Highness, the Queen intervened, making clear that Diana's decision was still request that she had not been pressured to give up the HRH. It is wrong that Queen or the Prince asked her, said an official palace spokesperson. She may have given up her title, which meant Kurt, saying to Junior Royal, but she had become a very rich woman in her own right with the settlement of around Pound seventeen million, that is equal to twenty five twenty point five million. As for her title, Prince William told her, Don't worry, mummy, I will give it back to you one day when I am a king. If you like the video, kindly like, comment, share and subscribe.